Hey everybody, I'm Jack Reeder with Future Pastimes. I'm one of the designers on the expansions for the classic Dune board game published by Gale Force 9. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about the Market Alliance in Dune. And that is one that exists between House Rich S and the Emperor. And the reason that I call this the Market Alliance is because it really centers around the buying of treachery guards. In particular, the Rich S treachery cards that they have to sell as part of their faction um, advantage. Uh, and the real strength of this is the Rich S player being able to choose the card that's going to come up for bid while they're in the Alliance, and the Emperor's ability to help the Rich S to be able to buy that card. And once Rich S has bought any of their own Rich S treachery cards, they can give that card to their ally. So this really puts the Emperor and the Rich S in a position where they can snap up uh, cards like the Null Entropy Box, the Stone Burner, uh, Juice of Sappho, the, um, uh, the Ornithopter, Distrans, anything that they really want to get their hands on, they can control that. Um, and so between their eight cards that the two of them can have, uh, they should be able to always get that Rich S card, um, whether it's sold first or last, uh, and then get that money to Rich S if they need it. In fact, the Emperor can give Rich S money whenever they want because that is their alliance ability. The other thing that can be done with the Rich S um, as your ally is the use of the no-field tokens. So the benefit that you get out of this is that the Rich S and, their, and the Emperor, in this case, can use the no-field tokens to get their forces down onto the planet very inexpensively which is really important if you do have the spacing guild in the game. If you're able to really uh, put a dent in their income, it makes it much harder for them to do what is a doom stack option, which is where the guild ships down a lot of forces, 10 or more forces, so that they can out-dial anywhere. Now, with the Emperor Riches Alliance, this is not a fast-moving alliance. This is one where they want to bide their time to build up their forces onto the planet and build up their hands of treachery cards. And that may involve buying up some cards that they, that they don't want and then having to get rid of them to make room for new ones. So the Emperor can always, just about always, fill up their hand at each bidding round and, and they can help their ally to fill up their hand essentially for free. But... In that, unless you are getting a hold of uh, card knowledge and why not bribe your way into getting it, um, you are going to end up with cheap heroes, worthless cards, uh, stuff that you don't necessarily need in order to help you win the game. So the that is the downside of the market alliance is that they, they really have to gear up to get to that point. So that's going to mean uh, they're going to have to spend a number of turns doing some stronghold blocking to prevent other players from going for the win. And maybe they want to make deals to do that. So the Emperor can, again, uh, they can in advance, they can bribe the other factions to say, yes, um, let's block the stronghold. Uh, and they can bribe to allow for <laughs> Rich S or the Emperor to throw the battle or to incentivize the other players to throw the battle. So if it's nice, if you are using the no-field tokens to get three or five forces down onto the planet each turn, that um, you can use to bribe other people to send in one force to block the stronghold and uh, prevent anybody from taking out your forces before you've had a chance to build them up. Moving down in in blocks of three or five um, means that it's not a very threatening move, and so it's easier to allay the fears of the other players that you're you're going to go for the win suddenly. Um, so that, you know, you have to understand that that if they think that you're not able to go for the win, that can signal that maybe they should try to go for the win. But again, with the Emperor's ability to, if necessary, ship or pay to ship for the Rich S, several forces down to help pay for spice dialing um, just to ensure that a win is prevented. Um, and the Emperor can help Rich S uh, bear the brunt of those sacrifices because they can pay to revive additional forces. So the Rich S, they get the two free revival 
and if the emperor is able to pay the spice for three more uh, that's five forces each turn so the rich ass player can be the uh, the the faction that jumps on the grenade to help block a stronghold if necessary but take advantage of the emperor's wealth um, and get yourself in a situation where you can afford to um, build up your forces in at least one stronghold preferably two if you're just holding on to two and the other players know that you still need two more to go for the win um, you can maybe stave off uh, someone else from going for the win or just bullying you um, and again nobody is terribly anxious to bully the emperor when they've got the sardaukar when they've got a full hand it's a, it's a bit of a risky proposition so um, take advantage of that as much as you can so that's that's the core of the market uh, strategy for the uh, for this alliance. It's um, buy up those rich s treachery cards. You know, if you're the rich s player, um, don't sell those critical cards before the alliance. You're going to want to save um, selling uh, null entropy and uh, and selling the um, stone burner and other really useful cards until you can get into the alliance. That way, you can ensure that you were able to buy those cards. And um, and for which chess, whether you get it or the emperor gets it, you can get it into the emperor's hand if necessary. And you can do that at any time. And, and in fact, if you're rich chess and you've got a couple of those, um, you know, you, you can give your ally a rich chess treachery card that is in your hand at any time if their hand is not full. Um, there's no limit. So if you've got four rich chess treachery cards, you can say, here's two of them, you know, right away when they need them. Or here's three. If the emperor's hand is empty, you can just sell them all. But you're only selling one per turn. And that is why you do have to bide your time. You've got to build up that hand. And then um, and then you can keep the players guessing about what it is that you just gave to the emperor, especially if you're holding two or more of the richest treachery cards. Um, and you can use the stone burner. And then you can play the null entropy box to go pick it up again. Um, so that, that is the real strength of this and having somebody who can help the rich S to control who's getting those cards and you're not just having to sell them for the spice, even, even, you know, with the emperor helping you fill up your hand, the emperor is still probably going to be earning a decent amount of spice every turn. It's just inevitable. It's how, how it works out. Um, and the fact that one of those cards, you, you know, selling one fewer because of the rich S um advantage um you're still the upside is you're getting powerful cards that the other players uh, are not going to be able to access so that's that's how this strategy for this alliance works let me know what you think of it if you've done this if you've had the emperor and the rich s teamed up uh how effective were they what sorts of uh shenanigans did they get up to let me know in the comments and any other insights you've had seeing this alliance uh in play Let's hear about those. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.